The model kit all began with my life-size Dryptosaurus head sculpture. Michael Trudeau from Exact Metrology surface scanned the sculpture, and I took that scan data into ZBrush, where I was able to sculpt the rest of the body to match the head. Next, I sent that sculpture data to Acme Design, where it was prototyped on an object printer. The resulting 11-piece prototype needed to be molded and cast so I could make multiple copies. This shows the process of creating the molds from these parts. I set the parts up in clay to divide them into halves and cover them with silicone rubber. Simple block molds, which will allow me to pour multiple castings. The base that the dinosaur stands on was sculpted over top of the lid to a jar of mortician's wax, one of my very first sculpting mediums. Here's the mold for that dinosaur foot base, and now the rest of the mold sections. This is how I would start every casting process. I'm dusting talc into the molds, here into the sections of the jaw and the head, and I'll do this for all of the pieces before I cast every single part. This lets the liquid resin flow into all the details without capturing any air bubbles. These are the sections of the mold of the feet and hands. Here I'm measuring out some of my liquid resin. And now I'm mixing a very small batch of resin. I'll be using this just a few drops at a time to fill the teeth of the jaw and the teeth of the head portions of the mold. And then with a small tool, I'll probe and coax it into the tooth cavities. I have to work quickly before the resin sets. I band the mold halves together with rubber bands, and I mix a slightly larger batch of resin and pour it in to fill the rest of the jaw and the head. I'll tap it on the tabletop to release the air bubbles, and then I press the, um, the cork into the mold to seal it shut. Next, I clamp closed the rest of the mold sections, and now I'm ready to mix and pour a bigger batch to fill the tail and the body, and now the legs, and the arms. And here I'm mixing and pouring the base. After the resin cures, I can open all of the mold sections and very carefully remove the cast pieces, the cast copies of my model kit. You can see there's a little bit of excess resin that I'll need to trim off. But in general, they're perfect copies of my original prototypes. Altogether, I had to make around 50 copies of the model kit as rewards for my Kickstarter project. So all the steps you see here are just to create one model kit. Finally, I'll take a grinder and remove the little bits of overflow and the pore holes so the parts of the kit fit together better. I worked with Jody Hoover, a graphic designer, to create a beautiful box artwork and IntelliSource printed those out for me as stickers. I applied the stickers to boxes one at a time, very carefully because if you get it wrong, you don't have a second chance to put it on again. And so one at a time, I built up my stock of boxes to fill to create the rewards. Some people received an unpainted, unassembled model kit, while others received a kit that I put together and painted 
either as a cold cast faux finish bronze or as a fully painted model kit depicting uh, more what the animal may have looked like in life, more like what my original full-size head looked like, that color scheme. Thank <laughs> you.